So I've been going around the country the last couple of years giving this talk on Islam and mathematics, the story of cooperation and peace, and the talk really comes out of the question, why do we call it algebra? Now you might think to yourself, why do we call it algebra? If you're taking algebra for the first time or whatever, you might think to yourself, gee, algebra, kind of a strange word. It doesn't sound like people were speaking English at the time they made it up, and of course they weren't. So we call it algebra because of the person uh, pictured on this postage stamp. His name is Al Khwarizmi. He writes the first algebra book around the year 800. Now this postage stamp was issued by the Soviet Union in 1983 to mark the 1200th anniversary of the birth of Al Khwarizmi. At that time, uh, Al Khwarizmi's birthplace was part of the Soviet Union. Since that time, the Soviet Union has broken up and so now his birthplace is part of the uh, country of Uzbekistan. Okay, here is his full name in Arabic, and here is the translation of it in English. Father of Jafar, Muhammad, son of Moses, native of the town of al Khwarizmi. So we see these long Arabic names sometimes on television. We wonder, what does it mean? Well, in this case, here's the direct translation of al Khwarizmi's formal long name into English. Okay, Khwarizmi, the town where he was born, is now Kiva in Uzbekistan. Why do we call it algebra? Well, here's a page out of Al Khwarizmi's book, the first algebra book written in the year 800. Here is the title of that book in English, and here is the Arabic translation. And the reason we call it algebra is because of this word in the title of Al Khwarizmi's book. Algebra comes from this word, and it's part of the title of his book, the first book, algebra book written in the year 800 by Al Khwarizmi. If you go to the online dictionary and you look up the word algebra and you look for the origins of it, you'll see that same word right there. So it's kind of common knowledge that uh, the word algebra comes from this Arabic word that was in the title of the first algebra book. Now it turns out that in Al Khwarizmi's book, he uh, for the first time sort of details the steps you use in these algorithmic processes like long division long multiplication, things like that. So if you take a computer science class, you'll see that the word algorithm actually also comes from Al Khwarizmi's name because he's the first person that's uh, credited with uh, showing us those, al uh, those algorithmic processes. So algorithm, Al Khwarizmi, that's the origin of that word. Okay, so let's uh, go from uh, where we are in the United States over to uh, the Middle East and see where Al Khwarizmi is born. So we'll use Google Earth, we'll go over to the Middle East. And you can see here is Kiva, Uzbekistan. You can see Afghanistan here, Pakistan down here, Baghdad, Iraq, some of the other uh, countries in the Middle East. Now it turns out that uh, Kiva and Uzbekistan, at the time that Al Khwarizmi lived, it was at the end of one of the Silk Routes. Now the trade routes at this time in history are really the information highways. If you live along one of the trade routes, trade routes, you're much more likely to see a very diverse group of people come through. You're going to hear news from other parts of the world. You're going to get information that people that live away from the trade routes don't get. So in my mind, it's no coincidence that Al Khwarizmi lives at the end of one of the trade routes, the Silk Route in particular, and turns out to be the person that writes the first algebra book. Now it turns out if you go online, there's some um, travel agencies, you can actually book a trip that goes along that trade route, ends up in Kiva right there. Part of it's on Campbell, pretty interesting vacation if you want to take it. Um, let's see, the story is very interesting from this part on because Al Khwarizmi doesn't write the first algebra book in Kiva, he actually writes the first algebra book in Baghdad, Iraq. So even though he's born in Kiva at the end of one of the Silk Routes, he ends up in Baghdad, Iraq, and that's where he writes the first algebra book. Now that brings up a whole bunch of other questions. What's going on in Baghdad at this time in history that would be conducive to somebody writing the first algebra book? And that will be the next installment in these series of videos.